Hey, welcome everybody. Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, and uh, here we are in the top of the 11th inning. It's all tied up at one to one between the St. Louis Cardinals and the 1971 New York Mets. So it's a 71 game towards the end of the season, uh, and last game in uh, last games in September. And um, I'm going to show you how, regardless of the game engine that you use, you can use Replay Baseball to keep track of your stats, give you your box scores, keep your standings and do all that fun stuff that takes a lot of time uh, away from the game. Now, some guys I realized like that part of it. I never did. It's one of the things that held me back from playing more. Uh, I wanted to play more teams and know the league better, but I didn't want to keep all those stats, so I kind of shied away from it and always kind of stuck to one team. Um, so anyway, this allows me to do whatever I want. It opens up the world of dice rolling for me and allows me to spend more time playing the games and and managing the games and uh, making the lineups and picking uh, pinch hitters and relief pitchers and so on, rather than, you know, taking uh, 30 minutes for a game. And then of course, two days to, to compile all the stats and so on. Now, again, I realize that guys have this figured out. They do it very quickly and that's great for you. But for the guys that just want to roll games and have the computer keep track of all the, uh, the data, well, here it is. This is uh, replay baseball. So let's do this. And um, who is up? Okay, it's Lou Brock. Lou Brock is up, and he's facing Ron Taylor. We did not roll for Ron Taylor yet. It was Tug McGraw, and then we brought we pinch hit for McGraw. Boswell, he grounded out, and then uh, now we're bringing in Ron Taylor. So let's roll to see uh, what kind of stuff. He's going to have his C stuff, so it's Taylor with his C stuff. And here we go. Lou Brock is up. All right, that's going to be a 21, and that's a strikeout. So Brock swings and misses at a curveball, and there is one out. Here's Milt Ramirez today. Milt Ramirez is one for three. So what I do here on the screen is just hit um, strikeout. Okay, boom. So there's one out. Here's Milt Ramirez. Here's a pitch from Ron Taylor. That's a 62, and that will be an out. It's a ball hit right back to Taylor who fumbles it for a second, but now gets his grip and fires it to first to Jorgensen for out number two. So that's one to three. Look how quick that is. Quick and easy. Regardless, you can play up a strat. You can play payoff pitch. You can play inside pitch. It doesn't matter, and this will keep all the stats for you. That's what really excites me about this. You can play status pro. You can play all the games that are out there. And uh, here's Luis Melendez. Let's do it. I'm sorry. Uh, yep. No, it's uh, it should be Ramirez just grounded out. So now it's Melendez. And that's a 43. And a 43 will be an out. Bounce to second base. Picked up by the second baseman Martinez. Over to first. And that retires the side. Three up and three down in the top of the 11th for Taylor. All right, it takes us down to the bottom of the 11th now. Jones, again, like I said, it doesn't matter um, what game you play. You can use this engine to keep your data, keep your stats. And that's the beauty of it. And then maybe I can show you some of that. It keeps your leaderboards. It get, offers you all kinds of information. It keeps your rosters so you know who's on the team at what time, what part of the year, and on and on and on. It tells you who's tired and who isn't, who, you, who you've used too much and who you haven't. You know, so this is a great, great informational uh, device that will help you uh, bring a lot of realism to the day-to-day -day dice rolling games that, that we love so much. Um, here is, okay, so in the bottom of the 11th here at Shea Stadium, and there's still a good crowd here at Shea Stadium in 1971, late September. The Unfortunately, the, the Mets are out of it. The Pirates took the division. 71, right? That's the year of the Pirates. So uh, it's going to be Cleon Jones batting. And Cleon Jones had a good season, batted 319. In our replay, he's batting 314. And here goes. Here's the pitch from Stan Williams. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a 63. And Stan Williams is a B, and that'll be an out. Fly ball left field over is... Left fielder Brock, and he makes the catch one away. Tommy Agee's up next. Agee has a couple of hits, a double, an RBI, and a single. So he's two for four on the day with two strikeouts. Here's the pitch. 
That's going to be a 42. And this may, uh, no, it's going to be a bounce out to third base. Nice backhand by Joe Torre. Long throw to first and in time to get the speedy Tommy Agee. So let's pop in Jones. It's a 7. And then it's a 5-3. Torre to the first baseman. Uh, who's playing first? Bochamp. And here's Kenny Singleton. All right. Another thing that I also, that this game does for you, is if you have a tendency to, you know, get distracted and, and, and just lose your place, this game will keep you where you're supposed to be at. That's the beauty of it. That's another great thing that I enjoy. So regardless of what I'm talking about or what I'm looking at or what I'm doing or the interruptions, um, this game is always going to tell me exactly where I'm at. And it's, you know, two plus two plus two, is six. It's always calculated and always organized. That's another beautiful thing about it. Here's Kenny Singleton. Kenny Singleton today has struck out twice and walked twice. What a surprise. Here's a pitch from Stan Williams, a 42. That should be a base on balls, but it is not. It's bounced to the shortstop. Easy pickings for Ramirez over to first and in time. That retires the side, so three up and three down. And we all we got to do here is hit 6-3. Boom, we're at the top of the 12th inning. This is particularly good for extra inning games where it gets kind of crazy when you have that score sheet and you're trying to, to I go from, you know, one inning a column to as many outs as I can per column late in the game when it's uh, bordering on, on extra innings. And that creates uh, a little bit of a hard to read uh, score sheet. So let, let's go back and let's continue. It is the top of the 12th inning. It's Joe Torrey coming up against Ron Taylor. Let's see what happens here. Joe Torrey's had a pretty good day. He's got three hits, three singles. That at 360. That's a 16, and that's going to be a bounce out to third base, picked up by the Mets third baseman, Wayne Garrett, over to first and in time, out number one. And all you do there is hit five to three. So it's a one-click game, and it keeps up all your stats. You want to look at your box score, go over here to box scores, and you have all the changes that you've made. As you've seen, I've done pinch runners, extra catchers, pinch hitters, new first baseman, uh, relief pitchers, on and on and on. And um, and so forth. And this keeps track of everything for me. And it keeps track of the season data and so on. And at the end, it'll tell me uh, one losses and, and all that great stuff. All that fun stuff has that. All, my, all the averages here. Housen's doing better than expected at 281. Cleon Jones is right where he should be. Ag right where he should be. Singleton right where he should be. Garrett right where he should be. Dyer, Foley, Cranepool, Martinez could be a little bit better. Martinez hit a little bit better than 252. Um, all right. So now it's a guy named Jorge Roque, and that's a 62 and a 62 for Taylor. We said he was a C. Um, that'll be an out, and it's a ninth. He's a fly out to right field. So two out now. And here comes McNerdy, the catcher. That's righty. Backup catcher had uh, 228 at bats. Here's a pitch. It's a 51. So that's going to be a KD check with an 11. And it's a, a ground to the shortstop. George Harrelson is a very good shortstop. He won the side. He won the side. He won the Gold Glove, and he will make this play to retire the side. That was inning number twelve. Next one will be thirteen if we get to the thirteen. So it's a six-three ground out. Harrelson plays flawlessly, and we go to the bottom of the twelfth inning. Who's coming up for the Mets? It's Wayne Garrett, left-handed hitter, versus Stan, Willi uh, Stan Williams. Let me see how many Stan Williams has pitched to so far. So I know when I have to pull him. He's pitched to six. He can go nine, so he's still good. Here's a pitch to Wayne Garrett. And Wayne Garrett with a 23 and strike three. Get some swinging. One down. Hit that K. Boom. 
All right, Duffy Dyer. That's a 63, and Stan Williams, we said it was a B, and that'll be an out. Bounce to second base, picked up by Kubiak, and Kubiak to Bochamp for out number two. And all we do is hit four three. And now it's T. Martinez. All right, let's find his card. Came in to play second base. And I believe he came in to pinch hit as well. So his card must be in here somewhere. Hmm. No, I think I just brought him into play second base. Greenpool was the pinch hitter. So let's grab him real quick. So again, the purpose of showing you um, the, the game today is for you to realize that, hey, this is a great way to keep all my data, keep all my stats, easy peasy. I kick back and the game does it all. And I cannot find the, uh... all right, here's Ted Martinez with two outs and the bottom of the um, 12th inning. All right. And Martinez. Here's a pitch from Stan Williams. That's a 65. Home run minus seven. And that's going to be a ground ball to third base. Right there is Torre, and he throws out. Martinez, three up and three down for the top of the 13th inning. Ron Taylor. Taylor's pitched to how many so far? Taylor's pitched to, um, let's see, to six. He can still go a little bit more than that. Here's uh, Ted Kubiak leading off. Switch hitter batting from the left side. That's a 51. It's an error check. And that's going to be a ground ball to first base. Handling it is Jorgensen, who should be a pretty good first baseman, and he is. Makes the play. Ah, with one, it's a three to one. He flips to the pitcher covering. So it's a three to one. All right, Bochamp is up. First baseman. Came in on the, I think it was a double switch. 24, and a 24 is usually hit by pitch number. Minus one, so it's one to four there. Minus one is a one to three, and we roll a four, so that's going to be bounced to second base. Handled by Martinez, sets his feet, and throws out Bochan. And here comes Williams, the pitcher, and we're going to go into the, into the uh, <laughs> bench. I'm going to go to the bench and bring in a pinch hitter, and it's going to be, uh, we got a righty going, so we're going to bring in Berta, a lefty. So now we got to grab them quickly. All right, Bob Berta, and we have a new pitcher for the, all right, that's a 55, and that's line, base hit center field. Right center field, he lines one with two outs, so Berta, pinch hitter, successful here in the top of the 13th he's on at first with two outs Lou Brock is up next pitch from Taylor and that's gonna be a 45 and that will be a fly ball center field drifting over is the center fielder AG under it and makes the catch All right, so no runs, one hit. Uh, no, that was the top of the 12th. Uh, no runs, no hits. Top of the 13th, no runs, one hit. And for the Mets, it was 0 0. So now we go to the bottom of the 13th inning. Berta single. 
and then it was Brock who flat out sent. All right, bottom of the 13th. Now it's the pitchers up. And plus we need a new pitcher for the Cardinals. And Santorini, he's coming in because you can see towards the end of the season, he still has needs to make eight more appearances to reach his, his goal. So Santorini's coming in. And we're going to roll for him, see what kind of stuff he has. Santorini will have his C stuff, another pitcher with C stuff. But despite that, we're in a 1-1 tie here in the bottom of the 13th. A lot of guys have rolled C stuff. So we're going to get a pinch hitter for the Mets. And it's going to be uh, Santorini's a, a righty. So we're going to go to grab uh, Shamsky, a lefty. Our Shamsky is going to come in and pinch hit. And here's a pitch from Al Santorini. That's a 14, which will be bounced out to first base, taken by Bochamp for out number one. Top of the order with Buddy Harrelson leading off. Harrelson today is a one for five, three strikeouts and a single. It's a pitch from Santorini, and that's going to be a 63, which will be a fly ball right field. Over is Melendez, two down. And here's Mike Jorgensen. Mike Jorgensen's 0 for 5, adding a 297. Here's a pitch. And that's a 42, and a 42 will be a base on balls. So two out walk. Jorgensen, the winning run is on at first. Here comes Cleon Jones. Leon Jones is the probably the best hitter, the best hitter on the Mets. And uh, Santorini checks in with the catcher Mc, uh, McNerdy and sets and deals. And that's a 25, which will be a bounce out second base, picked up by Kubiak, bobbled for a second, and quickly throws and just gets Cleon Jones to retire the side. All right, we're going to the top of the 14th inning, and I'm running out of space. Yes, I am. Top of the 14th. So I may eventually, I may just go to the, uh, just use the computer and forget the scorecard. So it's going to be uh, leading off now for the Cardinals. Uh, Milt Ramirez. Ramirez has a hit and two walks today. He's one for three. Here's a pitch from, ah, we had a new pitcher. I see that tells me that. So we're going to bring in, uh, let's see who needs, Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams, 16 of 22, so he needs he needs a bunch more. So we're going to bring in Charlie Williams. And we're going to roll. We'll, we already roll, so we'll use that. And that's another C pitcher, Williams, a C pitcher. And uh, there he comes, facing Ramirez, and that's going to be a 46. We already used the 18, so we're going to use another one, and that's going to be a foul ball. Souvenir for a lucky fan, Milt Ramirez. Here's a pitch again. It's a 53. That's a range check. And a range check with a five, third baseman. So it's bounced through the Garrett. Will Garrett reach it? And Garrett will get it over to first, one away. So Garrett has decent range at first base. At uh, third base, excuse me. Here's uh, Luis Melendez, pitch from Williams, 33, and that is ball four, one out walk. Joe Torre. So let's do Ramirez. He grounded out, and then we have uh, base on balls. <clears throat> Here comes Joe Torre. Here's a pitch to Torre, and that's going to be a 26 against a lefty that is ripped for a single. Otherwise, it's a fly ball, center field, and right there is A.G. for out number two. So this guy won a center, and here's Jorge Roque. 
The Rock. And uh, it's Charlie Williams, who's a bitch. That's a 66, and that is belted for a base hit single. Let's see how far Melendez will get. And with two out, Melendez is going to go to third base. So it's going to be first and third now. And the go-ahead run is on a third base. And here comes Jerry McNerty. Jerry McNerty is up. And he hit pretty well. He batted 289. Not a lot of walks. Struggle in the walk department, but uh, his batting average not so bad. Let's see what happens here. Charlie Williams against uh, Jerry McNerty. And that's going to be line base hit center field, and the Cardinals have taken the lead. That's going to score Melendez from third base. And runner is going to stop at second. So that's going to put runners on first and second now with an RBI for McNerty, the backup catcher, driving in Melendez here with two outs against Charlie Williams. Just hit the S for the single. If you hit the, hit the F's plus, he moves an extra base. He goes to third. It's going to be Ted Kubiak. Here's a pitch now from Charlie Williams. Checks in with Duffy Dyer for the sign. And that's a 16, and that'll be bounced to second base. Right there is Martinez. For the out. So, in the top of the 14th, it's one run on two hits, and the Cardinals lead it two to one. That Kubiak out was a grand out to second base. In the bottom of the 14th inning, it's Tommy Agee leading off. Pitcher is Santorini. See what happens. And Santorini, we decided it was a C. Here's pitch. That's a 32 and a C. That's going to be grounded to the short. Picked up by shortstop Ramirez, who fires the first in time. One way. One way. And we'll just hit that 6-3. And here comes Kenny Singleton. That's a 62. That's uh Another out, bounced uh, right in front of the plate. Out from behind the plate is McNerty. Pounces on it, fires the first. Two away. And uh, it's going to be Wayne Garrett. Here's a pitch. And that's a 61, which will be a bounce out. Shortstop, Ramirez. Ball game. And the Mets lose it by a score of 2-1 to one in 14 innings. The Cardinals with two runs, 11 hits, and no errors. The Mets with one run, seven hits, and no errors. Now let's look at some of the bells and whistles here. Immediately you can grab, uh, it gives you the MVP, Santiago Guzman, who struck out a ton of batters, a ton of batters. Uh, Charlie Williams gets the loss, four and six. Al Santorini, one and six. So he picks up his first victory of the year. The cards are 74 and 86. The Mets are 93 and 67. Let's go to the box score. All right, here it is. All those changes. If I would have had, you know, I did keep track of it, and it's a pain. It's, it makes for an ugly scorecard. It's all over the place. But when you look at the box score, it's nice. It's all organized for you. It's got all the batting averages of everybody and so on and so forth. Uh, it's got the, of course, the box score on top, the score, the scoreboard, excuse me, and the uh, it was just a run in the first for the Mets, a run in the ninth for the Cardinals, and then a run in the 14th, and they won the game two to one. Uh, let's go down and look at some of the highlights. Guzman struck out 18 and in eight innings. Holy smokes! He had 13 and in 10 innings in reality. Here he struck out 18, but the Mets helped him a lot because every time I rolled, I had a team, a Mets team that really struck out a lot and they had a lot of strikeouts on their card so uh Sadeki pitched well Sadeki with a 225 era has had an amazing season for the mets eight innings pick, uh, pitched six hits one earned run six walks struggled with the control but struck out eight mcgraw blew, blew a save his fourth 
um, on, uh, well, that's what he's, he's uh, three walks and two hits. Taylor came in with three innings and lowered his ERA to 481. But Charlie Williams took the loss, four and six, with 343 ERA. Uh, Al Santorini at 458 ERA took, uh, got the win. And that's it. Here you have your now. Let's go over here to the ballpark. Actually, we're going to exit this. Let's exit this. Now, this will play the games you don't want to play. So this was a one game played um, on, I think, uh, September 1st. So we're going to let someone automatically play all the other games except for the Met game. And it's going to stop at the Met game for me. It stops at Carlton versus Ryan. That's going to be a heck of a game. And uh, that's where it stops. So I'm going to pick up there. Let's go and look at the standings. We can look at the standings. Here are the standings. As you can see, Pittsburgh is, has 101 victories. The Mets have 93. Mets are seven and a half games behind, so there's no way for them to catch up. It's not going to happen. Chicago, 90 wins. St. Louis, Philadelphia, Montreal, all below 500. In the West, it's Cincinnati, 97 and 64. They're one and a half games ahead of San Francisco, who's 95 and 65. Remember, this is 71. The Dodgers, 77 and 83. Atlanta, all the rest of the teams have losing records. And the American League, which I don't play. Uh, Baltimore is ahead of the Yankees in uh, 71. Baltimore has 107 victories, whereas the Yankees have 90. Uh, in the West, it's Chicago. Uh, White Sox with 96 victories. And they're, uh, the Oakland Athletics are two games behind. That's a very close and tight race with about three, two or three games left. I don't know if if uh, the A's, who, who did uh, make it to the playoffs in, in 71, can, uh, can reach uh, the Chicago uh, White Sox. I don't know. But anyway, that is uh, your standings. Now, let's say if you want to see a leader. So you want to look at leaders. have great leaderboards here with the pictures. You can see bat pitching, batting. Let's look at the NL. Oh, no. Let's look at the NL pitching because that's where Seaver stands out. As you can see, his face is everywhere. Um, you know, he's kind of omnipresent in, on these uh, charts here. He leads in ERA. Uh, leads in one loss, leads in whip, leads in hits versus innings pitched, walks versus innings pitched. Uh, he leads in strikeouts, games, no, not games started. Shutouts, he's got 11. The next closest is Gaylord Perry with six. So uh, Seaver leads in strikeouts to walks ratio. So Seaver leads in a lot of inequality starts. Seaver's got 30. Uh, so Seaver's got a lot of, leads in a lot of categories. You can also look at the stats by team, any team you want here, and you can pick what you want. Um, let's see, ballparks for teams. Hold on a second, teams. Let me do teams. Statistics for the, for the team. There you go. So I went to the, I can go to whatever team I want. Let's say I want to do the Mets. Uh, let's see, New York Mets. Boom. It's going to give you all the stats that I rolled. It's all kept for me. Clown Jones played 132 games, House in 139, you know, on and on and on. Three triple, eight triples for Jones, eight triples for Harrelson. Um, let's see how many they really had, just out of curiosity. It's almost the end of the season. Harrelson had six triples, and Cleon Jones had six triples. They both have eight triples, so that's pretty close. Um So anyway, that's that's it. So you get a lot here. There's a ton of stuff that you can do. You can manipulate players if you make a mistake. Go into players and you can edit players. And you can check it out for free. You can check out this game for free. I, I had it for three or four months. I had an old computer in the garage and I just left it on. And every day I'd come in, I'd play a couple of innings right before work or right after work until I started getting comfortable with it and I started understanding it a little bit. So uh, So yeah. And uh, it's a fun game, and definitely it's it's affordable. It's 25 for the season, 25 for a, for a for the game itself. It's just one click to install. Excellent customer service. I've never they've never taken more than a few hours to get back to me. You know, over at Replay Baseball PC game. I live and die by this game. Uh, I keep on buying seasons. I, unfortunately, I want to support them more than I can. I have time to play all the seasons that I have. But I'm slowly but surely getting to them, really trying to be focused and dedicated to my projects. And that's about it. 
So this is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation of Replay Baseball PC Stat Keeper. You can use APA, Stratomatic, Payoff Pitch, Inside Pitch, Status Pro, uh, Pocket Pennant Fever. You can do whatever one you want. And uh, this will keep all the stats for you, and, and that's a nice way to uh, just roll games and, and relive the excitement of the, uh, of the game. Take care, guys.